and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Habiba Oladipo. President Mohamed Buhari has continued to defend his election for the second day running before the Presidential Election Petition Court. The Presidential Election Petition Court admitted in evidence all the documents at the opening of the defense. Details of that report will be brought to you in our subsequent bulletin. President Mohamed Buhari has reaffirmed the commitment of the federal government towards supporting the private sector to flourish with a view to providing job opportunities for the teaming unemployed Nigerians across the country. This was while receiving in audience the executive members of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry on a courtesy visit. The president described the consultative approach adopted by his administration on the continental free trade area as an example of Nigeria's desire for sustainable growth and inclusive growth. State House correspondent Adam Usambo has the details. Officials of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry were at the seat of government to formally appreciate President Muhammad Buhari for signing the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which they believe will promote economic integration and growth of member countries. We look forward to speedy execution of programs and projects that, that will create an enabling environment to enhance the competitiveness of Nigeria businesses within the context of the AFCFTA. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry made a case for the president to assent to some other critical pending bills passed by the National Assembly, including the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, towards enhancing investment growth and creating more jobs. There are many abandoned federal government properties in Lagos, many of which are being occupied by miscreants and posing security risks. We urge that steps be taken to ensure rehabilitation or leasing of these properties. We commend your intervention to resolve the traffic gridlock around the Lagos port, ports in Apapa. We urge you to please sustain your interest in this matter to ensure that it is fully resolved. The officials formally invited the president to attend their 2019 presidential policy dialogue session to enable his administration share perspectives with the private sector on how to strengthen the national economic gains in post-recession era. President Muhammad Buhari noted with delight that in the last four years, his administration invested heavily in infrastructure, supported development banks to provide loans to traders and small entrepreneurs, and signed executive orders to enhance the local content policy as well as ease of doing business to facilitate investment. Thankfully, there was alignment with the monetary authorities and this significantly contributed to the successes we are seeing today. And with intra-African trade accounting for only 14% of Africa's total trade, the president believes that the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is both an opportunity as well as a threat. It is an opportunity as Nigerian manufacturers can aggressively expand to meet the huge demand across the continent. It is a threat as one can abuse the rules of origin to flood the market with imports from outside the continent, thereby destroying jobs here at home. Nigeria's engagement in the next phase of the negotiations is to ensure proper safeguards are put in place to support African manufacturers. We shall continue to count on your support to ensure this goal is achieved. Promising to review proposals made for possible consideration, President Buhari assured his guests that the federal government will continue to do its very best working with the Lagos state government towards finding lasting solutions to their proper gridlock in Lagos. He described as saddening that businesses have had to suffer as a result of the challenge. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. An Investment and Economic Advisory Council has been inaugurated by Nasara State Government to fulfill aspirations of achieving gains of recovery and growth plan of the state. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that the mandate of the 15-member committee is to cover the tenor of Governor Sule's administration. The high-powered Investment and Economic Advisory Council is to be headed by Professor Konishola Ajayi with 14 terms of reference as its operational guidelines. 
The committee is to unfold practical economic transformation component and streamline strategic investment growth plan for accelerated development of the state. Members of the council were selected on their track records of experience, professionalism, and proven antecedents. They represent the best in the local and international business communities in Nigeria and all shares of opinions in economic and business acumen. Professor Konishola appreciates the assemblage of accomplished Nigerians from the organized private sector as assurance for a comprehensive roadmap to launch the state into an industrial hub. Your Excellency, uh, hope is that your vision to make Nansara State attractive and pleasant for investment and for living is achieved. The committee's time frame, which elapsed at the end of the administration's tenure, is to submit periodic reports that will open window of investment to domestic and foreign developers. The senior special assistant to the governor on investment and economic development, Ibrahim Abdullahi, presented models for achieving economic inclusion, leveraging on areas of comparative advantage in Lafia. Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And back to our earlier report that presidential election petition court has admitted in evidence all the documents at the opening of the fence. Delia Atsumbi reports. Buhari, through his lead counsel, Wale Olanikbekun, SAN, while opening his defense, tendered several documents, including the certified true copy of his school leaving certificate obtained from the Castina Provincial Secondary School in 1961. A witness, Oshida Ndia Dewumi, testified that President Buhari had five credits, including oral English, in his secondary school certificate. Shida Ndia Dewumi is a deputy registrar with the West African Examinations Council who certified the copy of the statement of result containing the results of 18 candidates that sat for the examination in 1961 at the Casina Provincial Secondary School. Jury Cross Examination Council to Atiku Levi Usoku, SAN, raised the issue of the differences between Mohammed and Muhammad, an issue which Mohammed Abba dispelled and affirmed that there was no striking difference between the two. Two other witnesses, Mohamed Kwatu from Niger State and Usman Dogana from Nasarawa State, who were APC agents at the ward level, told the court that the presidential election was conducted peacefully in the two states. They equally testified that a smart card reader was used for the accreditation of voters. During cross-examinations, counsel to Ainek Usman Ustas, SAN, Livi Uzogu, SAN, counsel to the petitioners, and Latif Fadbimi, SAN, counsel to the APC, the witness sustained their claims as disposed to in their statements. President Muhammadu Buhari, apart from this Wednesday, asked four more days to defend his victory in the presidential election conducted on February 23, 2019. In this case, the PDP and its candidate, Atiku Abubaka, are challenging the victory of President Muhammadu Buhari in 11 states of the Northeast, Northwest, and North Central geopolitical zones of the country. So far, President Muhammadu Buhari has called seven witnesses in the defense of his victory in the election. The matter has been adjourned to Thursday, 1st August 2019. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Governor Sanwulu charges agencies on security and professionalism. Details of these and more with Ruth in Lagos. Hello, Ruth. Thank you, Habiba, and welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, has charged state government agencies to discharge their duties responsibly, be courteous while ensuring safety of lives and properties of the people of the state. The governor made the call during a tour of state agencies. Nosa Osla reports. At the Rapid Response Court Parade Ground, the Dr. Obafemi Hamzat promised to improve the welfare of the officers and provide tools such as bulletproof vests, patrol vehicles, as well as approved refresher courses for them. The governor stated that security was paramount to his administration. We sincerely apologize for the mix-up there in Lagos. And moving on, following the recent judicial pronouncement that categorizes the Islamic movement in Nigeria as a terrorist group and its eventual prescription by the federal government, the Nigerian police has placed a ban on every of its activities. Inspector General of Police Mohammed Adamu at the monthly meeting with top 
officers hinted that community policing deployed men plans covers recruitment of 40,000 community police officers. Kunliade reports. This is the total is 114 With that salute, the IGP settles to discuss police in Nigeria with other top police officers from across the country. Top on the agenda is the violent protest by the Islamic movement of Nigeria, which claimed the lives of Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations at the FCT Command and a co-member with Channels Television in addition to those of the protesters. The IGP says enough is enough. The impact of this is that all forms of procession or protest by Islamic movement in Nigeria is now illegal and thus Ban. The police and other security agencies are fully committed to giving full effect to this judicial pronouncement in the interest of our internal security and national cohesion. Sequel to the presidential approval for community policing, IGP Mohammed says officers are to be recruited from communities where they reside to complement the activities of the police force. This policing architecture will free up conventional police personnel that will hitter to perform such functions. And hence our manpower profile in relation to deployment to frontline operational duties. A review of recent police activities shows that the force has arrested 4,187 profile suspects nationwide. In Abuja, Kunle, Adeyeye, NTA News. There will be more reports on Nationwide after these messages. And event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College Joss is organizing a special two-week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four-week intensive course on non-linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non-linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College near Old Government House, Rayfield, George, Plateau State. Date 19th to 30th August 2019 for the course on protocol, event management and public relations. 19th August to 13th September 2019 for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College Jaws. Training you to be the best you want to be. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. These days, people get their news and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide.
NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Many thanks for being there. A report just reaching us says it was a terrible experience for residents of Tumfuri area of Gombe this morning when an oil tanker carrying fuel exploded following a traffic accident. Zara Omar Adamu reports that although the fire was brought under control, no life was lost. In line with the federal government's commitment to the safety of lives and property of all Nigerians, the Federal Fire Service has taken delivery of 12 out of 42 firefighting trucks approved by President Mohamed Buhari. Doing their reports that the equipment which will be deployed to the six zonal centers is to boost efficiency and prompt emergency response. Fire disaster is one of the critical and most rampant emergency situations which often render victims helpless. Most worrisome of such incidents is the delayed response resulting from obsolete facilities being used by responding agency. Concerned by the neglect of the Federal Fire Service by past administrations, President Mohamed Buhari, upon his inauguration in 2015, pledged to see to the worrying needs of the Federal Fire Service a result of which is the commissioning of this world-class equipment. And provide protection of critical assets that was done ever before this administration came into play. The best chemical that they use on this truck is called the F500 air capsulator. These are one of the best trucks you can think of to have, whether locally or internationally. At the zonal and state level, we continue to increase to be a modern fast and responsive uh, service. And we've entered into contract agreement with the supplier for a two years warranty maintenance period. With huge investment being made in the emergency sector by the federal government, dignitaries at the unveiling stress the need for Nigerians to take ownership of public infrastructure and condemn those who engage in destroying such public facilities. A simulation exercise by men of the Nigeria Federal Fire Service just to demonstrate their capacity to man this firefighting equipment in Abuja, Doni, Dia, NTA News. Many thanks, Doni. You're still watching NTA Nationwide. It's time to join Nura in our Sokoto Network Center for some reports. Thank you, Habiba, and welcome to Sokoto. Sokoto State Government has restated commitment towards sustaining the existing peace and cordial relationship between the states and state shares border with. The State Deputy Governor, Manid Mohammed Danya, stated this at the, at the interactive session of National Boundary Commission with State Boundary Committees for the Northwest Zone. The report. The released kidnapped persons comprises of three men, women, and two children. They are released followed a reconciliation meeting between their abductors and the peace initiative committee set up by Sokoto KB and Zampora state governments. The committee has so far secured the release of more than 20 victims who are indigents of Sokoto state. Commissioner for Careers and Security Matters, Colonel Garba Moyi, is a retired who presented the victim to the state deputy governor said no ransom was paid before they are released. The state deputy governor, Manir Mohammed Danya, reaffirmed government readiness to ensure adequate security of lives and property of the people. He urged people to support the peace initiative by avoiding any acts capable of truncating the reconciliation efforts. These people are from Sabombini and the Issa local governments. As you can see, there are six in number before we receive about nine of them from Zampara State who are indigenous of Granyu. Later, Commissioner of Security went to Zamfara and bring about four of them. In the same being, two young rescued boys who are Nigerians were handed over to the representative of the mayor of Kwani, the Commissioner of Police, Suraibi Usuli. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission Secretary Office has taken its crusade to the grassroots gate towards engaging citizens for a sustainable fight against corruption. Show my mandatory reports on the Commission's made in town hall meeting in Sakoto. The report. The town hall meeting is to take the campaign against corruption to the grassroots 
strategize and further enlighten the public on the evils of corruption, promoting for behavioral change and encouraging the rural populace in taking interest in activities of anti-corruption as other objectives of the meeting. The presentation dwells on corruption forms, causes and effects describing public involvement in combating the crime as a step towards ending the menace. Corruption as a crime has led to misappropriation of the nation's wealth, arrest, banditry, underdevelopment, and other social biases in the society. So it is just like a disease that is so chronic, and once a disease is said to be chronic, it is not possible or easy to get it cured overnight. Commissioner for Local Government, represented by Director of Monitoring and Inspection, described the crusade as a giant stride towards fighting corruption. He urged those in public and private offices to exchew all forms of corruption for the development of the nation. When you want to nominate or elect somebody to go and represent you, you're not a based the selection based on the merit of that particular person, but you will base it on what did he give you, what relationship does he have with whom and whom. Half point of the event was contributions by participants. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. The federal government's social investment and youth empowerment program has gotten a boost in Sokoto through the National Film and Video Census Board. Shio Muhammad Dati again reports that a media literacy and youth empowerment program was organized by the board in collaboration with the wife of Sokoto State Governor. The report. The program had the theme, Film Classification and Censorship in the Film and Video Sector. Participants are expected to be trained on the role of National Film and Video Census Board as well as job openings. Empowerment packs were distributed to beneficiaries containing cell phone and 20,000 Naira each as capital to enable them to start a small business. Participants are also expected to be ambassadors of Film and Video Census Board who will help in sanitizing and protecting cultural and social values of the nation. The National Film and Video Census Board has decided to empower people on classification status, classification symbols, so that they know what to watch and report back to us what is normally sound and culturally sound for the development of the industry. Wife of Sokoto State Governor Maria Amin Waziri Tambol, represented by State Commissioner for Science and Technology Kula Haruna Abubakar, challenged the participants to take advantage of the program and be part of the board's crusade. Sultan of Sokoto, represented by District Head of Guy Gisani Umar Jabi, described the program as timely, considering the negative impacts of westernization on Nigerian youths. This is indeed a very commendable initiative because it will go a long way in sanitizing, uh, sanitizing the use on using the best films that have essence. Half point was visit to the palace by the executive director, National Film and Video Census Board. In Sokoto, Shu Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Sokoto is back to Habiba in Abuja from One Nationwide. Many thanks, Nura. It is one thing to get employment and another thing entirely to fit and work effectively in that organization. That explains the conduct of orientation for newly employed staff in almost all organizations. Ololadi Alayake reports on a one-day orientation for NTA staff. The attentive faces of the new staff of the NTA here shows how important this session is to the adaption and progression in the largest TV network in Africa. Julia Nicholas and Yawuza Mohammed have been with the NTA for about a year now. But it is this induction that spells out to them clearly what they have been seeing and sometimes doing on the job. With this that I've heard and what I've been learning so far, I can efficiently or effectively uh, attach it in my unit and make it properly. They teach us on how to relate with our subordinates, how to associate with superiors and uh, co-supervisors. The messages from all departments of the NTA were clear. Professionalism, discipline and hard work. Lateness to work is not allowed. If you are on afternoon shift and the rule says report by two, wherever you be, report by what? By two. To be a producer, you have to be total, in which you know a little bit about camera, 
you know how to edit, you know how to present, and you know how to package. It was an event that Julian, Yawuza, and the other new employees will always remember as it officially welcomed them into the fold of the NTA family. In Abuja, Ololade Alayaki, NTA News. The National Orientation Agency is equipping its personnel with provisions of the Freedom of Information Act to guarantee that business of government is open to public scrutiny. Francis Form reports that the workshop is part of efforts to ensure public participation as well as institutionalization of transparency and accountability in government. The Freedom of Information Act came into existence in 2011 to ensure that citizens have unfettered access to information Six years after, and to guarantee that the provisions are clearly understood, the National Orientation Agency is building the capacity of its personnel to further sensitize Nigerians. The agency will expect improved performance by staff in relation to the FYI compliance, as well as greater staff involvement in the sensitization nationwide. In another development, the National Orientation Agency, in partnership with Qatar Charity, has unveiled a multi-million naira facility meant for the less privileged in Dakwa community, a suburb in Tafa local government area of Niger State. This is a very good example of a public-private uh, partnership. As you can see, this facility here addresses one education, it addresses two health, it addresses uh, uh, it promotes uh, commercial activity with the shopping complex. No school fees, no uh, no pay for the school uh, uniform, the feeding, everything is free for often. Qatar charity is a blessing. We don't know, we are, I'm even short of words to say. We only thank God and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed them back. This kind of project will bring a serious development to the community, especially job, job and other things. The facilities built by the Qatar charity include an orphanage, a clinic, staff quarters, a mosque, and a five-a-side football field. In Abuja, Francis from NTA News. And Ruth in Lagos is ready for us with more reports from that zone. Thank you, Habiba, and welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sanwolu, has charged state government agencies to discharge their duties responsibly, be courteous while ensuring safety of lives and properties of the people of the state. The governor made the call during a tour of state agencies. Nosa Osla reports. At the Rapid Response Squad Parade Ground, the governor, who was in company of his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat, promised to improve the welfare of the officers and provide tools such as bulletproof vests, patrol vehicles, as well as approved refresher courses for them. The governor stated that security was paramount to his administration and as such, the officers must be ready to assist the administration in fulfilling its promises to residents. So who wants to give him to The Legosians are going to be the decider. They are going to be the ones that I'm going to take information from. They are going to be the ones that I'm going to ask questions that how are the men of RRF are they doing? You've spoken also about the vehicles and which are all welfare. That's why I have the executive security question here. I've given him instruction as they have showed me that things that have to do with the maintenance of your vehicles are critical and are paramount to us. We'll continue to maintain those values. Very, very quick. I mean, I will not give you a certain day, but soon will also increase and improve the fleet as well. At the Safety Arena Oshodi, while addressing joint section of men of the Lagos State Neighborhood Safety Corps, Tax Force, and Lajesk, the governor also promised to provide tools for the agencies. He urged them to avoid financial inducements and be courteous in their duty. Governor Sonwo Olu further said the tour was to mark the 61 days of his administration in office. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NCA News. 
Corruption across all borders has been identified as a major impediment to economic growth and development of any society. To tackle the menace, a clarion call has been made to Nigerians to complement government's efforts in its fight against corruption. Nenrotnina Musa reports that this came to the fore at the inauguration of the more than 200 personnel into the National Anti-Corruption Volunteer Corps, Lagos State Chapter. The inauguration of the personnel of the National Anti-Corruption Volunteer Corps, NAVC, Lagos State Chapter by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, is aimed at reinforcing its personnel towards exterminating all forms of dishonest practices. National Coordinator, National Anti-Corruption Volunteer Corps, NAVC, Mike Soe, re-emphasized the Corps mandates to the new personnel. We have to involve the citizens, we have to get them engaged actively in the mobilization of citizens, sensitization of people, so that every single Nigerian will take the fight against corruption as a personal mission in life. Lagos State Resident Commissioner, Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, Shitema Binga urge the personnel not to relent in their fight against graft as their efforts will help create an enabling environment for the good of humanity. Those that have volunteered to fight corruption, to stand firm and fight corruption, now is the time for us to declare a state of emergency in the war against corruption. Key players at the event comprise members of the academia, personnel of the Nigerian Immigration Service, traditional heads, government functionaries and captains of industry. In Lagos, Nerit Nina Musa, NTA News. The Lagos state government is embarking on a series of strategies to revamp the health sector. The latest is the partnership with some key players on health from the state. Hinginu John Adams reports. Data from the 2018 Demographic Health Survey by USAID and other stakeholders revealed that Lagos State has set a pace for others to follow with its emergence as number one in the nation in reduction in child and maternal mortality. The indices show that it has recorded 80%, the highest percentage of women delivered safely by skilled attendants, while the percentage of children with severe anemia has reduced to 0.4%. Although these achievements are laudable, the health sector in the state is not without some challenges, ranging from unmet need for family planning to low coverage under the health insurance scheme, which is meant to meet the needs of the teaming population. To change the trend, this group is dialoguing with the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Minister of Health, to come up with intervention programs. What we intend to do in Lagos State, particularly, is to focus on the public health indices of family planning and routine immunization, because these are the indices that affect the family. We continue to invest in our staff so that we can redefine our goals and improve on our objectives. As the conversation ends in this hall, it is expected that the partnership will continue until the set goals are achieved. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. We now join Chinenge in Enugu for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Ruth. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu. Imo State Government says it will partner Abia State in the development of agriculture in the southeastern part of Nigeria. The state governor, represented by the deputy, Gerald Irona, gave the hint during the flag off of the 2019 farming season held at an international conference center, Umuahia. Nkiru Onyejc reports. Governor Emeka Ihedioha, who was represented by the Deputy Governor Gerald Ironda, assured the Abia State Government of the readiness of his administration to partner the government and people of Abia State to deepen their collaboration in the area of agriculture in the region, while urging farmers in the region to take advantage of the opportunities created by the Bank of Agriculture to boost food production. <laughs> 
High point of the event included the joint planting of yam by the Abia State Governor, Dr. Okezi Ekbazo, and the Deputy Governor of Irona, and the inauguration of the new Bank of Agriculture building in Omaha, meant to serve the entire southeastern region of Nigeria. Nkiru Onye Jesse, NTA News. Government at all levels in the country have been charged to place high premium on education to unlock the economic and technological advancement of the nation. Governor Ifa Nguyen gave this charge when he received the new vice chancellor of the University of Nigeria and Suka, Professor Charles Igwe, at Government House, Enugu. Susan Eze has details of this report. Stressing the importance of placing high premium on education at all levels, the governor noted that tertiary education drives the will of economic and technological advancement of nations, and the University of Nigeria and Soka is already towing that part. He congratulated the new vice chancellor and assured him that Enugu state government remains committed to strengthening the existing relationship between the state and the university. It is certainly in our interest that the institution attains desired heights in academic and technological excellence to stimulate the significant transformation of our society. The new Vice Chancellor of UNN, Professor Charles Igwe, appreciated the contributions of the state government to the development of the institution, particularly for addressing the problems of water scarcity at the Enugu campus of the university. He promised to work with the government to achieve more. Thank you for the water articulation of your net. If you have delved into it headlong and uh, you have decided that a Google your net will have water. Professor Charles Igwe, an alumnus of UNN, assumed duty as the vice chancellor of the institution on the 10th of June 2019. In Enugu, Susan Eze. NTA News. To reform the society, women have a critical role to play as homemakers and nation builders. Wife of Enugu State Governor Mrs. Monica Uguain stated this during the flag up of the 2019 Women August Conference. Again, Susan Eze has details. Pointing out that the society is a reflection of the situation in the families. Kwanye emphasized the need for women to put extra effort in the moral upbringing of their children and words. Decrying the moral decadence, indiscipline, criminality and other societal ills plaguing the nation, the governor's wife maintained that if mothers play their roles by maintaining close contact with their children and monitoring the companies they keep, the homes can be sanitized and the nation Women play a critical role in our families. This simply portrays her as a necessary bridge due to her indescribable qualities of nurturing, caring, and imparting values on the children. The event featured lectures on health and other activities. The occasion set the tone for the takeoff of the annual August meeting in communities across the state where women brainstorm and come out with ideas that will help advance peace, unity and progress in homes and the nation. The theme for this year is Women, the Bring World in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Enugu. It's back to Habiba in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Chine. And moving on from here, for women to effectively occupy leadership positions in Nigeria, they need the support of fellow women, sustained self-development efforts, and mentorship. This formed the thrust of opinions of different stakeholders at the World Outstanding Women Conference in Uyo, organized by the National Female Asso Students Association of Nigeria. Imo Etimudo reports. The conference focuses on issues that hinder effective leadership responsibilities of women in the society and blamed women themselves for not achieving desired leadership positions because rather than supporting one of their own, they always prefer to support the male folk. After much deliberation on the theme of the conference, the women and other stakeholders urge women to continually develop themselves 
inculcate self-confidence at all times and always be accountable if they must attain the expected leadership positions. You must be purposeful. You must set your priorities and set your goals. When someone doesn't know her what, she doesn't know how to control. She could have used the power that has been very saved in her. As somebody who wants to become a good leader, you must first of all know who you are. If we find credible women, we will support them to become president. Is the change not starting there? Yes. Highlights of the conference was the presentation of a book chronicling the programs and activities of the outgoing presidents of National Female Students Association of Nigeria, Comrade Idongesin Maika. The conference, which was on the theme, The Woman, Empowering Women to Lead, had the new executive of the National Female Students Association of Nigeria formally presented to the public. In Uyo, Imo Etimudo. NTA News. Meanwhile, Solving Social Voices, Mitigating Socioeconomic Development Through Women Empowerment has continued to be popular among more groups embarking on such ventures. Elizabeth Omori was one, at one of such empowerment programs in Kuji, Abuja. And they collect credit put. Before I say this, they're going to worry me that they cost me. Give me my money, only two days I give you to say. That two days, if I never say, now so my mind would shake. Veronica is a widow and a trader who has been fending for herself and her children since her husband died. Her situation is not different from that of so many others in this hall who are ready to change the narratives of wallowing in self-pity and dependence to becoming self-reliant. This is Kutsi, Glimpse of Hope Foundation, which offered financial and empowerment support. Think big and start little. No amount is too small. I have come to learn so many things. Concerning this uh, uh, bookkeeping and uh, accounting. It is the belief of Glimpse of Hope Foundation that a gesture will facilitate social economic development and create economic opportunities for the women, especially widows, single mothers, and the vulnerable to provide for their families. The cash, they're not bringing it back to us. But we want to like, mentor them and see that. Our aim for them, our dream for them comes true. If you're doing food or you're in catering or whatever it is that you're doing, you need to make sure that your own is better by making sure just a little quality of cleanliness to your work. Veronica and more than 25 other women were exposed to several micro-businesses and also taught how to develop a business plan, keep accounts, market their products, produce smoothies and sandwich. The women, however, advocated girl-child education and stringent laws against violation of their rights. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. And Felicia in Joss has the next sets of reports on Nationwide. Thank you, Habiba. Welcome to Joss. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has assured the people of Plateau State of his administration's commitment to continue providing good governance, especially with the current boost in the state internally generated revenue. This was at the flag off of accelerated revenue drive and presentation of 15 field operational vehicles across the 17 local government areas of the state. Priscilla Grumnan reports. The 15 operational vehicles meant to be distributed across the 17 local government areas is to boost performance of revenue drive in the state. In line with his administration's policy of sustainable economic rebirth, Governor Lalong reiterated his commitment to providing the necessary support that will uplift the revenue base of the state to meet the development needs of the citizenry. It is worthy of note that our administration recently signed into law. The Taxes and Revenue Consolidation Bill for the streamlining and harmonization of taxes, rates, levies, and charges collectible by states, MDS, and local government councils to help build taxpayer confidence in tax administration and also create a conducive business atmosphere. 
chairman of the Plateau State Board of Internal Revenue, Dashi Alat, said the Accelerated Revenue Drive Initiative will scale up the revenue base of the state to achieve economic goals of the board. We have commenced monitoring and investigating federal ministries resident in the state to recover outstanding tax liabilities through collaborating effort of joint tax board, leading to the recovery of part payment of about 2.6 billion. He appreciated the governor for the promptness in signing into law the Consolidated Revenue Law 2017, which has remarkably strengthened tax administration. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. Intending Muslim pilgrims from Plateau State have been urged to exhibit high sense of discipline and God-fearing attitude while at the Holy Land. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong gave the church at the farewell ceremony for the 2019 Intending Muslim Pilgrims to Saudi Arabia held at the Rong Palm Township Stadium, Joss. Again, Priscilla Grumnan reports that the airlifting of the Intending Pilgrims will commence this week. 1,195 intending pilgrims are performing the 2019 Hajj exercise with 630 going under the sponsorship of the state government, while 565 are self-sponsored. Governor Lalong said as a responsive and responsible government concerned with the spiritual upliftment of its citizens, his administration is sponsoring one of the highest number of pilgrims in the state. I urge all the intending Muslim pilgrims from Black to State to see themselves as good ambassadors by showing positive and good God-fearing behavioral conduct while in the Holy Land. Executive Secretary of Plateau State Pilgrims Welfare Board, Al Haji Awal Abdullahi, and this year's Amirul Hajj, Justice Muhammad Siraju, expressed gratitude to the Governor for his magnanimity. Sir, we owe you a lot, and indeed, the Muslim Ummah in the state owes you a lot. From the ongoing preparations so far made by the board, all aspects of the Hajj operations have been completely handled in a well organized manner. At home and in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Emir of Kanam, His Royal Highness Al Haji Aliou Babangida, commended the state government's efforts in sponsoring a large number of pilgrims and enjoined citizens to coexist peacefully. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. That's our contribution from Joss. It's back to you, Habiba, in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you. The federal government to empower 20,000 youths and women in six states of the federation in its agro-processing, productivity enhancement and livelihood support project. The program, which will be sponsored by the World Bank, is expected to create additional 700,000 indirect jobs in the next five years. Details with Musa Baba Aliou. The project is designed to enhance agricultural activities of small and medium scale farmers and improve value addition in six states. Youth and women, including persons with special needs, are to benefit more from the five-year project. Heather Akani is the officer in charge of youth and women empowerment. She says the beneficiaries will be empowered on best agronomic practices, value addition, and marketing of produce and products. Each of the participating states is looking at three value chains. One for uh, food security, a value chain for food security, a value chain for export potential, a value chain for livelihood improvement. So all of this really to really go well, go a long way in each of the states. The beneficiaries will be assisted to develop business plan as they will be supported with matching grant supporting technology. So we are in the process of selecting those who have not benefited from any other uh, project so that we will meet the target of reducing the uh, level of unemployment and uh, reduce the level of poverty. Apart from the, um, the 400 we're going to do this year, we're going to do another set next year. And after, after training, we're going to empower and we're going to link each trainee to a mentor to ensure that this um, investment is, um, you know, is sustainable and it is um, viable at the end of the day. In the course of the project implementation, about 90 units of simple design aggregation center will be constructed and linked to market information and commodity exchange platforms. From Lagos, Musababa Aliyu, NTA News. 
Production and availability of quality seed for farmers have been described as panacea to guarantee food security and supply in Nigeria. Discussing the brainstorm on the new Seed Act bill assented to recently at a forum in Ibadan, Shola Waid reports. Annual crops are established each season from seeds. Production of high quality seeds can have a major impact on potential crop yield for farmers and subsequently boost the economy of the nation. The assent to the amended seed bill by President Mohamed Buhari has paved way for stakeholders in the agricultural sector to develop strategies and operational models for the enforcement of the seed law. Uh, the term to talk about is to ensure that good genetics, good varieties are made available to the farmers so that farmers' productivity will increase and the food security of this country our focus here is the use of this technology in agriculture to improve seeds, um, to come out with improved seeds, quality seeds. Farmers, this is really a means of guaranteeing that they have access to high quality seed of improved varieties so that they can raise the productivity of their agriculture. If the government can uh, uh, boost the, the or take up the growth enhancement scheme support policy of the previous administration. I think it's going to boost agricultural development in the country. If you don't have a strategy, you don't have a plan, you no go, you go nowhere. But when you have a, a plan, you have a strategy. Government is urged to implement policies formulated while Agricultural Seed Council should sanitize the seed industry and ensure that fake seed producers are brought to book. In Ibanashon Lawahid, NTA News. It's time to take another break. We'll be back shortly with more news. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. And now sports with Tamara Ebiwe. As countries in the continent are putting finishing torches to their preparations towards the forthcoming African Games in Morocco, Nigerian athletes and officials are optimistic that the country will do well in all 23 events and third four. We've been practicing for more than three weeks now, so tactically we are ready. The expectation of every team that goes is to go for the gold medal. Football coaches in the Federal Capital Territory have concluded arrangements in building Abuja Football Village in the Buari Area Council. When completed, the village will serve as a training camp for clubs within and outside Abuja. FCT Coaches Association believes that with support from all the six area councils, the project will commence soon. I will give my maximum support to this uh, particular uh, uh, project that is, is, uh, has been proposed. Casta Samaya has opted against defending her 800 meters title at the World Athletics Championships in September, following the latest setback in a bid to overturn the restriction of testosterone levels in female runners, the Swiss Supreme Court's reversal of an earlier ruling that suspended IAAF's new regulation on testosterone levels means she will now only compete if she submits to hormone-reducing medication, which she has vowed to continue fighting against despite her disappointment. In boxing, 
British boxer Dillian White has been provisionally suspended by the World Boxing Council over an alleged drugs test which took place before his recent bout against Oscar Ravas. White, who was cleared to fight by the UK Anti-Doping and the British Boxing Board of Control, won the WBC interim title and the right to challenge Deontay Wilder after his unanimous decision win. With sports updates, Tamara Ibiwe, NTA News. First Lady of Nigeria Aisha Buhari has expressed heartfelt condolence to the Executive Governor of Adamawa State, Amadou Umaru Fintiri, over the death of his father, Alaji Umaru Badami. In a statement signed by the media director to the First Lady, Suleiman Haruna, Mrs. Buhari said the governor's father died at a time when the governor needs his prayers. She, however, told the governor to take solace in the fact that the deceased was a successful father and an accomplished military officer. She prayed Almighty Allah to grant the governor and his, the rest of his family the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. The presidency has announced the passing of Alhaji Tijani Yusuf Wednesday morning after a brief illness, aged 63. Alhaji Yusuf, popularly known as TJ, was onto his transition to special assistance, special duties to Jalal Arabi, Permanent Secretary, State House, Abuja. A statement by the special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Femi Additional, described the deceased as a very likable and unassuming gentleman, adding that Yusuf was known for his excellent ex administrative skills. Most noticeably, his pivotal role during swearing in or taking ceremonies of top appointees of the federal government before Nigerian leaders. In recognition of his meritorious service, Yusuf was given national honors of member of the Order of the Niger in 20, 2006 and officer of the Order of Niger in 2012. After receiving several commendation letters, following one from the Archbishop of Canterbury, deployed to the State House in 1994 from the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Rural Development, he rose to the rank of director in 2013 and retired in 2016 after decades of serving several Nigerian military and civilian leaders. Following his mandatory retirement on the basis of age, he was appointed special assistant to the permanent secretary. The late Yusuf will be solely missed by members and staff of the State House. After prayers at the National Mocks Abuja, his remains were conveyed for interment in his hometown, Mina, Niger State. Al Haji Yusuf was married and had children. And next is weather for tomorrow. That's nationwide for today. Many thanks for watching. I am Habiba Oladipo.